after getting the transmission in the car, I couldn't get the car to run properly. Um, the fuel was bad. You could smell it. You could see it. It was deep yellow color. You're looking at a chart of the fuel system of this car and how it works. And basically how it works is you got your fuel in a tank, you've got a vent, um, you got a fuel strainer in front of the vacuum tank, which would be slash fuel pump. Um, that sucks the fuel um, through the line out of the tank, uh, fuel tank, and into the vacuum tank, and then it uh, moderates the amount of fuel that gravity feeds down to the carburetor. Um, first thing you're going to check is the fuel strainer. Um, does that have garbage in it? The uh, second thing you're going to check, um, gas cap vent, is that plugged? Because since the vacuum tank is pulling from the fuel tank, it needs fresh air to uh, go into the tank to allow the fuel to come out. Uh, check for uh, a kinked fuel line if you don't have any fuel at the strainer. Um, you'll see in the video that um, do not put rubber on these lines. These should be solid lines all the way across. Um, that'll be pointed out in the video. Um, the fuel tank, if you have fuel going or vacuum going to the fuel tank or vacuum tank, um, you don't have a problem there. If you don't, um, look at your vacuum source coming either from the intake manifold or from the vacuum pump, which this engine had. Uh, vacuum tank, um, the fuel gets sucked into that tank. Once it hits a certain level, it is gravity dropped down to, to the fuel line and then goes to the carburetor. Um, the ultimate um, problem that I had with this vehicle was in the vacuum tank. I had multiple failures. I had um, cork had swelled up and was grabbing, then it wouldn't rise, and then the mechanism had varnished up so bad with the bad gas that the mechanism was sticking. And I, I ended up uh, taking the mechanism all apart and polishing it with a buffing wheel. And um, between a new cork uh, and that, it fixed a problem. Now below that, it gravity feeds into the fuel line and then to the carburetor. Um, when I initially started this car, I got fuel coming out of the carburetor everywhere. The float was stuck. I hit it with the back of a carbur or a, a back of a um, screwdriver, and the float unstuck and started working properly. But I did have some runnability issues with it. Um, the carburetor uh, jets had got varnish in there from the bad fuel, so the carburetor had to be rebuilt. So just after you look at this chart for a little bit, uh, click forward with uh, the video and you'll see how I diagnosed this problem. It wasn't necessarily in the same order I made out the chart. Um, I had to teach myself this system. It was the first time I ever had to deal with uh, fixing one of these systems. So I had to learn. Well, just had a gusher. Turned the fuel on and it came blazing out of there. I tapped the float wheel a couple of times with the back side of the um, screwdriver and the, the float unstuck, but the fuel's yellow. I have no long, idea how long this fuel's been in here. I'll pull a sample down from the tank and see what's going on. Hopefully I don't have to uh, get into this carb. This is where I'm at now. Uh, I've charged this on and off for over three hours. The battery's starting to hold the charge, but I think it's shot. I'm keeping my fingers crossed. Uh, cranks up pretty good with no spark plugs in it, but when I put compression on the engine, it won't crank it over. So there's we got no uh, load on it. I've purged the can here. We got some new fuel in there, but it, that's still garbage fuel. Uh, the, I'm keeping my fingers crossed. These plugs were saturated when I tried to start it yesterday. And I'm thinking it's just because it had garbage gas that fouled out the plugs. So I'm going to clean these up, get the battery reconnected, keep my fingers crossed that I'm not running into town and get a battery. And hopefully I can get this started up. And uh, it's got a quarter tank of fuel in the back. I might have to drain that and get some fresh fuel in here so <sighs> home stretch right hey let's check for spark while i got these out i got spark oh all the wire moved away from it gotta be careful this stuff that'll light you up man okay 
I know it's a fuel problem now. Well, this is why you should only use brass plugs and steel fuel tanks. That cast iron plug ain't coming out, and I ain't even messing with it. So I guess I'm going to be siphoning fuel the old school way. There's some more of that urine colored fuel. I've only got a quarter tank, so it shouldn't be too bad. Oh, I use it as a chance to clean my drain pan here, huh? If this is a uh, rec fuel or race fuel, this should be crystal clear. Not after a a night of drinking without having any water. It shouldn't be that color. I want to show you something else. Ah, I just, just missed it. Oh, yeah. These came out of the fuel tank. When you have a vehicle that has a still fuel tank, you store it with a full tank of fuel. Because what happens during temperature changes, the inside of that tank, everything above the fuel will rust. And that all ends up going to the engine. See, it's got a miss in it. And it's number two. And I can show you why. I'll take a spark plug wire off here. Hear the change in the way the engine's running? Let me take number two off. There's absolutely no change. It's getting spark. So either we have a spark plug issue or we have something going on with uh, the valves, I'm thinking. It's, these cars, they just get wore out. It's just, it is what it is. I'm going to swap spark plugs and see if uh, the problem chases the spark plug. Yep. Okay, let's figure that one out. Number one spark plug, running rich. Number two spark plug, not running at all. This thing is saturated. Let me clean these plugs and swap them. If the problem follows the plug, it's the plug. If it doesn't follow the plug, I think we got some ring issues going on here and we're getting excessive oil blow by. I just decided to do a compression check first. Uh, the plugs are out. A modern day engine would be about 125, 150. Okay, let's move this over to number one. Now, these are low compression engines, so I expect to see lower uh, Lower numbers Let's here. See what number one's got in store. Hey, it's not a compression problem. It's a spark plug problem. We might need another plug in this. I was just checking it, and it shut off. Look at that. It's plugged up the line coming from the fuel tank. Let me get this off of here, get this garbage out of this. Well, I was just getting ready to take it for a ride and it shut off. <sighs> I got a feeling some of that crap's down in the carburetor. I don't want to be pulling carburetors off. Let me take a closer look. Well, just pulled the plug off the bottom of the float bowl, got next to nothing out. That tells me this is not getting fuel. The line is plugged up somewhere. And with the amount of crap that's coming out of that fuel tank, uh, yeah. Yeah. The line is blown out back to the fuel tank. I'm going to prime the vacuum fuel pump right now. I've cleaned out all the fuel out of the bowl. So if the vacuum pump is working, that should fill up with fuel. Uh, 
This is so nice having this primer here. That should start filling up here pretty soon. If it doesn't, there it goes. That line was plugged. Woo! Hopefully that was all that's wrong with it. I'm going to let it run here for a little bit before I get out on the road and have to deal with all this. Let me show you what it's doing. I just put some fuel in there. I tried tapping on that so the float's not coming loose. It should take off the high RPM and install out in a second. And we should not be seeing an air gap right there either. Okay, here it goes. Come on, baby, do it. Before I do anything next, I'm going to put fuel back in here. I'm going to check the vacuum coming from the vacuum pump, which is there. If that's good, i got to figure out how to free up that canister. This one doesn't look rebuildable. Uh, maybe, maybe at the bottom might be a way to do it. Let me figure this out. Well, I'm done messing around. The carburetor's coming apart. This will be easier to get apart and back together than the vacuum pump. I want to make sure, but look at the fuel in the fuel bowl. There's so much contamination in there. I'm hoping there's a piece of dirt that's floating up there getting into one of the jets that's causing this problem. Well, I've never had one of these apart before. What we got here is a variable venturi. When the airflow coming in, or the velocity increases, this plunger will lift up and allow more air in. And then there's the needle and seat right there. What's, what's kind of strange about it is the choke is hooked up to that. So when you choke it, it must open this up and allow more fuel in instead of having a separate butterfly to create a vacuum below the high speed circuit. Interesting setup. There's one of the jets right there coming from the bowl. Let's get this apart and get it cleaned up. Well, nothing glaring, just dirt and I don't know. Busted a gasket, time to make a gasket. So when you're making gaskets, always punch out the smaller holes first than the larger ones for some reason. You do it the other way around, the smaller holes will always tear and bleed through the gaskets. This is a little bit smaller than I need, but I'll walk it around, make it work. Lucky I didn't take that out on the road. It just did it again. I have absolutely no fuel coming out of the fuel pump. I got fuel on this side. It's got to be in the fuel pump. Got to be. Well, I had to do it. I pulled the can off. I'm just getting junk everywhere. <sighs> Yeah, it's pretty rusted up inside of there. I don't know if you can see it or not. The chucks of rust could be getting into that line area. Let me try cleaning all this out of here. Well, I think I found the problem. This flapper valve is sticky as hell. This may be it. Let me get this cleaned up. This should not be this stiff. This cork weighs a ton. I'm going to let this dry out overnight and then coat it. I can almost squeeze the fuel out of it. I think I found the problem. At least I'm hoping. Now we are talking. Woo! This smells like the trenches in World War I. Stuff's coming right off. I let this soak for 20 minutes. Nothing. Well, very little. Put that in there, within three minutes, most of this crap is out of here. 
Oh, I gotta go find me some more of this. Broad sail and here I come. I'm clean up the cork a little bit. Just get rid of some of that swelling. You can see that the fuel has just saturated it. Now I'm going to uh, let that dry overnight. Yeah, here we go. This stuff's cat's ass. <sighs> yeah. I just need a little bit of a coat on the cork, really on all of it. I'm um, doing a getting it on my hands. Don't get it on your hands. Well, it's too late now. Might as well guide it where it needs to go. This stuff dries fast. And wherever you don't want it, you better have it taped off or plugged off. I gotta get it all over the whole cork. I guess I should have thought to what to do with the cork after I did this, huh? I need to hang us on something ASAP. Uh, screwdriver will come in handy. Screwdriver and a vice. Okay, there's that. I'm going to pour this in here, like I said. All the holes are plugged up. Then I'm just going to rotate this around right up to my tape line. You got to use a wire tape. If you don't use a wire tape, you ain't going to get your tape off. Doesn't need much with this. Now I'm just going to rotate this around like this for a few minutes and then pour what's left back into the can. New day. Let's see if I can remember how to put this mess back together. That's ready to go. That's ready to go. Uh, yesterday I drilled out the passages in this. This is for like a lawn tractor. The amount of flow, fuel that needs to go through this, it wasn't sufficient. So I blew out the passages. I got rid of the, the disconnect here, or not disconnect, but the on-off valve, it's no longer needed. There's one below it on the can. Uh, I'm going to replumb how this was. For some reason, there was a vent sticking out of the top. It doesn't belong there. Um, let me clean up this mess and start putting this all back together. Okay, float materials ordered so I can rebuild the fuel pump. So yesterday I was at a VMCCA drive event and I was talking to an old timer. And yeah, I called you an old timer. And he said to look for when somebody splices fuel line into the hard line. And he said them vacuum tanks, fuel pumps, they pull, they don't push. And he made a great point. Modern day fuel is garbage. And it'll eat older style lines apart. And he had gotten into a situation where his vehicle would run for 10 minutes and then start for fuel and shut off. What was happening, the inside of the fuel line had been laminated and it would squeeze shut with the vacuum. I am going to hard plumb that right now. I'm gonna take that failure mode out of the loop. Hopefully the cork will be in. Uh, it's not even cork, it's some new fancy material. I'll let you know when I get it. Um, hopefully that'll be in Wednesday and I can get the fuel pump uh, together and get this out of the garage and onto the next project. Got some wife stuff with her car. Uh, truck still needs some stuff done to it. It's just never ends. Well, 
it appears at one time this was hard plumbed. And then put a new exhaust on and didn't quite bend the exhaust correctly. So it interfered with the line. So they just pulled the line back and put a rubber hose across. Well, it was easier than I thought. I didn't have to put in a splicer line on there. I had a union. I just needed to turn it down in the lathe so that it would fit up onto the sending unit. Well, not even the sending unit, the pickup. And then uh, just a couple reducers and adapters. There, that's done. We'll keep our fingers crossed. Maybe that air coming in the line was being sucked through somehow by that uh, by that rubber hose that was on there, huh? Well, I'm waiting for the float material to come in to rebuild this the proper way. I don't know if you remember, there was a drip down here, so I've pulled the mechanism levers off. And what I'm going to do is, I've got some nitrile bushings, or uh, O-rings. Uh, you have to use these because they're fuel and oil resistant. If you use just the normal uh, Joe Blow stuff. Uh, the alcohol and the fuel will degrade this. So I'm going to slide that over the shaft and you can see this is adjustable. This is about a zero tolerance onto that shaft. I'm going to slide it onto the shaft and then when I tighten this up, this is tapered in-wise. It'll, uh, it'll close up that gap and you can adjust the amount of um, force you're applying to the O-ring to squeeze around the shaft. Too much, the shaft doesn't want to move. Too little, it is going to leak. This is just a simple fix. I don't have to uh, pull the carburetor off to do this. Just slide right on here. Normally this I think probably would have had like a graphite packing. Oh, sorry. I had a graphite packing in there. So now I'm just gonna slide the nut on there and uh, snug it up. I got it back together. What I'm doing, is this one's the lock nut I'm going to tighten this down okay it doesn't want to move I'm just going to give it a little bit of a turn and then I want to make sure that when I pull that's the choke um, well actually it's the choke but what it does is it moves the needle seat down and allows more fuel to go into the into the carburetor for starting up. So when I tighten this, it's gonna squeeze that O-ring. And what I wanna do is get it to where it's just tight enough to where I can operate the choke. It's going in and out pretty easy. So I'm gonna put a little more tension on this. And what I'm going to do is tighten it up toward the choke. You can't pull the choke in and out. I'm going to back it off about an eighth turn. And then I'm going to tighten up the lock nut. And that should not leak anymore. Do you hear me? You're not going to leak anymore. Well, the new cork material came in. I've got to rebuild this can. Um, I'll explain later on the video why I'm doing this. After I tried to attempt to fix it. I like these uh, these Kingston cans a little bit better than the Stewart. As in the Stewart, everything's bolted externally, so you've got to you've got to take the screws or bolts out to remove the vacuum part of the can. Uh, I took the bolts out here in the firewall so that the bands are loose, and then. Um, there is some screws right there that I need to get out. It's taking the clamp load off the bands. Yeah, I need a wrench. Hopefully, I will be done with this car today. Because I have to realign the door on my wife's brand new Lincoln. As it seems, some people at the factory didn't know what the hell they were doing. And the doors hit each other when you open it up. 
but that's another story. Okay, right here. This is the part right here that makes it all work. Yeah, drain this. Before I take it over to the bench, let me drain this. Now, the first thing I need to do is get these screws off. And then I'll show you what's going on internally in the can. I've had this apart before. You'll see in the videos in the past, but I'll try to explain this better. There we go. So the cork in here, it swelled up and it was binding in the sleeve and would not allow it to go up and down. And you saw in the earlier video what I did is I cut away the bad cork material and I put red coat on it to seal up the cork. The problem was I don't have enough good cork material to maintain the buoyancy. So what was happening was it was sinking down, filling up, but then the cork would not lift to drop the fuel to the carburetor. So I've got some fancy dancy new material that I am going to make a cork out of. I'm also going to rebuild this gasket too. I need, this needs to be completely sealed, that tank right there. And I'll take this apart and I'll clean it up or I'll clean it up with some carb uh, cleaner the best I can. I want almost no friction on any of this. Keeping my fingers crossed. This is leaded in here. It's just basically a nut let it to the bottom of that. All I have to do is just unscrew this. And it should come apart. There we go. We got that out. Got that out. Like I said, this is a higher grade material. I got this from a restoration place in California. So that's off to the side. I am going to throw this in a tank of carb cleaner right now and then I'm going to work on machining that up and getting the brass hardware into that. Yeah, I just got this cork out. It, it's too far gone. It's just, it's just crumbling apart. That's what the problem was. These things don't last a hundred years. This just pulled right out. So I'm going to clean it all up, get it over to the lathe, get this machined. And keeping my fingers crossed again. We got this loosely snugged up in here. The old cork was two inches, so I've got this measured off with the cutoff. And hopefully I've got it clamped down enough. And I'm just going to go really slow with this. Cuts like butter. I'm tempted to go faster, but I don't need this thing flying out of here. Okay, now I got to put the float lever piece in. I got out my calipers and I ended up with a 3 8 drill bit. It's 10 thousandths press fit. Uh, it should be fine. I don't think it'll split that. I'm going to go fast on this because I don't want friction to take more material off. But it should. I don't need it buggering up on itself. I've never done this stuff before, so playing it safe. Well, what happened, what I thought was going to happen, it happened. Uh, the friction made that side a little bit bigger. It goes in, but then it gets snug down here. I'm going to take and I'm going to flare the bottom of that out with like a taper punch somehow so that it'll grab into this and not want to come out. 
what I did is I came in on this side with an end mill and I cut a relief in there, a step. So now when I expand that, it's going to grab onto that and it's not going to go anywhere. I only need to flare this out just a little bit. So I got this sitting on a post here so that it's not going to deform it. And just got a, a regular punch with a good taper. I don't want to get too crazy with this. I just need to flare that out. And that should do it. Now I got to get the punch out of here, huh? <laughs> Let's see how we're going to do that. Uh -huh. I'll get it out of there. Time to make the gasket. This one's fairly straightforward. Just got to trace it out. Of course, this is not the original gasket at all. This doesn't even look like it was made with gasket material. Hey, but back then, you did what you needed to do with what you had. Should just be fairly simple. There we go. So I get my uh, get my punches ready for this. For the most part, just a pair of scissors. If you're gonna make gaskets, get a leather punch, especially with these small holes. It makes your life so much better. Get a good one. It doesn't come apart when you make holes for your gaskets. I'm sure I got this one at a garage sale somewhere because I don't like buying new parts or new tools. So, going to be doing that for a bit. And basically, uh, put the screws back in here and some washers and snug it up loosely. So now I can just come in and run this right to the edge of the can itself. I don't need gasket hanging over. That doesn't do me any good. All it does is collect dirt. And I'll just finish doing this for a little bit. Clean off the, the mechanism part and get this back together. Well, I'm going to do my best to explain how this works. The Stewart can works a little differently because it has needles and seats. But this unit here, the, the float goes into, and it needs to be sealed, completely sealed. That goes to the mechanical uh, vacuum pump. That goes to the fuel tank. So what happens is when there's no fuel in here, this is down. It creates vacuum and it sucks the fuel in. As the fuel gets high, it opens it up and it dumps the fuel down into the lower uh, chamber, which I'll show you in a second, and then it closes off again. So it's pulsations of vacuum drop, vacuum drop, vacuum drop. And when it drops, it drops into this can right here which is gravity fed to the carburetor. If there is a hole in or a vacuum leak anywhere in the fuel line, it's not gonna hold vacuum, it's just gotta be airtight. This is what I've been fighting. Getting this, the, the float and everything to work together. All right, time to put this together. You have to put the gasket on first. Then you put the float in. And then you're going to put the float canister part in, and that threads on. Now, you got to make sure it's in the right place because this will interfere with the side of the can if you don't get it in the right place. And then get this thing all lined up. Got 
Hey, let's get the screws in this thing. Okay, I think it's working. Looks like I got fuel flow. When that chamber fills up, that should stop flowing. And then when the engine uses flow, uh, the fuel, it should open back up again. So I'm going to just keep an eye on this for a few minutes. And hope this is it. It got it. It fixed the problem. It's been running for 20 minutes now. I got all the air out of line. It's not shooting bubbles anymore. I don't got the nasty uh, drip, 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 drip that I had. It's running good. I just got to put the floorboards back in. I'm going to take it for a little test drive. And then make the call. This turned out to be more than I thought. But, you know, every project I do always turns out to be more than I thought. And I'm not saying that I don't think a lot or enough, but it just seems to happen. Look at the size of that buck. You need to be over at my house, mister. I know I've said it before, but I got it this time. That fuel pump was something. Time to clean this up and send it home. Oh, I just put about 10 miles on her. A-OK. -okay. I had none of that mess going on that was going on before. I got it fixed. So this project, I just got to wash it, and it's done. I normally don't work, drink during the week anymore. But uh, I sure need something. This was a project. 